Is the crypto market being cancelled before the bull runs even got started with the recession fears in the US, with the global recession fears around the world? We've got lots to talk about today. This is an emergency update. Let's dive in. So guys, welcome. I'm Keith. This is Crypto Bullseye. And the reason you're probably all watching this is because you're fearful today. The market's are looking pretty crap. We're going to look at the Bitcoin chart in a minute. But firstly, why did this happen? We need to understand why it happened. And I want to talk to you today about business cycles, how business cycles play out, how markets reset before the start of a new cycle, and how markets go through quantitative easing and quantitative tightening during different periods. You can see that the Japanese stock market today, that was the culprit, it was the Japanese stock market, and it crashed its biggest one day drop since 1987 as global root intensifies. These markets are all interlinked, guys. If you think of world trade, you think of currency trade, they're all trading with the dollar and other currencies, but the trade that's going on between them, if one market drops, it has a knock-on effect with the other market. If that nation is trading with the other nation, it has a knock-on effect with the other markets. And you can see the main one is the United States, the global leader, as far as financial services is concerned. So there are the global leaders. And when the US catches a cold, when the US sneezes, should I say, the world catches a cold. And what that means, guys, and it happens time and time again, if the US goes into recession, the world goes into recession and we go through periods of downturn. And it happens time and time again with the cycles. You go through stimulating times and you go through tightening times. And the market cycles play out time and time and time again the same way. So the Japanese stocks crashed its biggest since 1987. It actually dropped about 15%, which is massive for a nation's stock market. And what was the knock-on effect? The knock-on effect was that the US stocks fell sharply on Monday, that's today, as part of a global market sell-off around US recession fears. Dow Jones dropped 901 points or 2.3%, NASDAQ down 2.9%, and the S&P 500 down 2.5%. Blue chip Dow earlier fell as much as 1,200. So this is due to the US recession fears, guys. We'll talk about that in a minute, what I think about the US recession fears. So fears of a US recession were the main culprit for the global market meltdown after Friday's disappointing July jobs report. Investors are also concerned that the Federal Reserve is behind in cutting interest rates to bolster an economic slowdown with the central bank choosing instead to keep rates at the highest in two decades last week. Look, in July, guys, the market never built in any kind of rate cut in July. The market's built in a rate cut for September potentially in November if Trump gets his way. But September, there's a market rate cut built in. This happens time and time again. You had the pandemic crash where we dropped all that. And then what happened? They all got round together. They all sorted out a package and they stimulated the economy and the money printer went brrr, again and again and again and again. And that's what happens time and time again, guys. They've got to agree a stimulation package, to stimulate the economy. And that's my that's my prediction, guys. They're all going to get together. The Democrats, the Republicans, they'll agree a stimulation package. They'll print the money into the economy and then everything will be good for the next president in November. It's not going to look bad for the new president. It's going to look good for the new president. Whoever it is, it's going to look good for them. And it happens time and time again. So we're going to look at the Bitcoin chart. What happened with Bitcoin? This was, this was what all the fuss is about. We had a massive drop in Japan. We had a couple of between 2 and 3% in the stock markets in the US. This is what happened in Bitcoin today. To its bottom, 15% of the downside. Now, 5.18% of the downside. So it has recovered from its high here. Bitcoin's dropped 30% from its extreme high there. When you look at it in comparison to what it's done since the 1st of June, uh, 1st of January 2022, uh, 2023, all the way up, pull back, guys, pull back. It's hit the 618, it's reacted at the 618, and then we've had a bit of a buyer. So what I want to show you, zoom out onto the weekly. So this is the current one, and the reason why I say we might not have reached max pain yet is because at the start of each market cycle, there's a reset. And a reset wipes the bulls out, it wipes the bears out, it get, loses everyone's confidence, people think that the market's over, and then that's when people are interested. You get institutional buying, you get banks buying. This time, guys, you've got something else. You've got governments buying. 
and the governments don't want to buy at a high price. So if you're selling your crypto at the bottom, guess who's buying it, guys? Guess who's buying it? Right, okay, what happened here? You had all sorts happening here. This was the top of 2021 bull run. You had Luna crash, you had Celsius crash, you had all the bad news in the market, all the bad news in the market. You had a lot of lockdowns, you had all sorts going on here. And the charts were telling us that people were having a crap time during 2022, during 2023. You've got the May crash in 2021, bad news, bad news. It happens time and time again, guys. This was the 2017 cycle. You got the 2017 cycle. You had a relief rally in 2019. Doesn't look much here, guys. Doesn't look much here, but does this look familiar to you? Sideways, 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 sideways. Bit of a recovery. Bam. 64% of the downside. Market reset. What happened? Big buy up and then the bull run started. What happened here? Not enough data for that. But you had exactly the same, guys. You had a dip, big buy up, and then the bull run began. It happens time and time again, and that's why I'm a little bit cautious as to whether we've got a little bit more downside on here, because we don't know what's going to happen. Only the markets will decide what's going to happen. Technical analysis is just probabilities, guys. And that means that you're wrong a lot of the time. You need to be right more times than you're wrong, and you need to have a better success rate of one to one. Um, I go a minimum of 1.4 to one and I've got better success rate than 50%. So that's how you get an edge in the market guys, but you're wrong a lot of the time. So we don't know how far this pulls back. Could pull back to this support zone here. That's sitting at 44,000. You could even get a nasty black swan where you get a wick to the downside, big wick to the downside, and then straight away a buy up candle. And what that causes is fear, sell, 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 sell. Who's buying? Who wants to buy? Bam, straight up, buy back, reset in the market and continue. So I just wanted to bring this to you guys just to understand how market cycles work. We've gone through a time of quantitative tightening over 2022, 2023. That's the hard times of the market. That's when things are expensive. We've had high inflation. Now inflation's coming down, things are getting cheaper. And my prediction is Jerome Powell is gonna reduce the interest rates at the same time as the US agree a package to stimulate the economy. Everyone's gonna be happy. Market cycle will continue. and We'll continue on our merry way. So if you did enjoy the video, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you want me to cover next. And I'll see you in the next one.